So can you tell us a little bit about your research and what the main findings were? Yes, of course. Um, it is about autoimmune encephalitis, which is a severe uh, neurological condition. And patients have multiple symptoms like uh, cognitive problems, behavioral changes and seizures. And these seizures uh, are, well, they occur frequently and they're severe and usually they don't respond to anti-epileptic drugs, but only to immunotherapy. Um, and some patients have less severe uh, symptoms of autoimmune encephalitis, but these patients have, uh, well, they have frequently seizures. Um, so it's important to recognize these seizures as being part of an encephalitis or encephalopathy. And um, so we thought that um, these antibodies, these antibodies that cause autoimmune encephalitis can also occur in patients with epilepsy and that was the objective of the study. Right, so you guys look at patients with intractable epilepsy or, or all patients with epilepsy to see if they have these antibodies? No, we um, only selected adults with focal epilepsy of unknown etiology and it was very important that there was no clinical suspicion in these patients for autoimmune encephalitis. Got it. So these are any patients, even those who responded to anti-epileptic drugs? Or yeah. They, okay, great. Yeah, so it was a really broad uh, cohort. Yeah. yeah, and so what did you guys find? How many of those patients had, had antibodies? Well, we, uh, we've included 582 patients, and 20 of them had antibodies, so 3.4%. Hmm. Um, so that's, um, well, a minority of the patients, but a relevant proportion because they uh, need other treatments. Right, so that might impact practice perhaps in, in a number of ways. Can you tell us how this might uh, be relevant to neurologists who are practicing yes, today? Yes, it's, it's very important to recognize these patients because they uh, probably require other treatments than anti-epileptic drugs um, because only 15% of the patients respond to anti-epileptic drugs while in the others uh, immunotherapy is required to achieve seizure freedom. Great. So what are your next steps going forward with this, with this project? Well, we've incorporated our findings in the Dutch epilepsy guideline. So um, we've created a score based on six clinical criteria to identify these patients. Mm -hmm. And um, by using this score, the uh, number of patients could be narrowed from 582 to 103 to be tested. Um, and we want to incorporate this score in our, uh, well, we've incorporated it already in the Dutch guideline.